Hi, my name is Kim, and today we're going to talk about woodpeckers. Welcome to McHenry County Conservation District, Wonders of the Wild. Woodpeckers are a class of bird that involve uh, long beaks and that are often seen, most common behavior, pecking into the wood of trees. They stay all year round, even though they're insect eaters and we don't normally have insects around in the winter. The reason they can do that is their long beaks and long tongues are able to get to the wintering insects underneath the bark of trees. Now, a lot of people wonder with woodpeckers, how can they drum against a tree and not hurt themselves? But what they have are a couple of different adaptations that prevent that pain or injury from happening. One is that their beak is very, very sharp and chiseled. So they're actually able to cut through and into the bark, not stop dead where it would be a jarring uh, effect on their head. The other thing is that they have very long tongues, which are ideal to get to the insects, but they also help by being so long that they wrap around the beh behind the skull and they can cushion the brain so that it doesn't bounce around while they're drumming on the tree. So woodpeckers will peck into a tree for several different reasons. One thing that they do is called drumming. And drumming is purely a communication tool. They're not actually trying to get into the tree or find any insects or make a nest. What they're doing is making a noise to be heard by other woodpeckers. Sometimes it's a bonding noise with a mate and sometimes it's an aggressive uh, noise to chase away other woodpeckers. The other reasons that woodpeckers peck into the wood is to make a cavity for a nest. And so they will actually spend a full day, usually the male, uh, clearing out an opening in a dead tree so that the female can lay the eggs and then raise the young within that cavity. And then of course, there's the smaller pecking holes that are where they were looking for food. We have several different kinds of woodpeckers in our area. And some of them are difficult to tell apart by their name because it's not always the most prominent part of the woodpecker that it's named after. So for example, the red-bellied woodpecker has a lot of red on its head and it's often mistaken for the red-headed woodpecker. If you're able to see the belly, which you often aren't, you would notice though that there is a red patch between the legs on the belly of the red-bellied woodpecker. The red-headed woodpecker, on the other hand, has an entirely red head and black and white patches that are quite stark in, in their difference. The hairy woodpecker and the downy woodpecker look very similar. They have uh, dots of black and white on their back with a white patch down the center and the males have small red spots on the back of their head but there is quite a size difference. At least a third to even a half larger are the hairy woodpeckers. So when you're seeing them, it's hard to tell when they're not next to each other, but try to look for the beak length. The hairy woodpecker will have a beak that's actually longer than the depth of its head, and the downy woodpecker's beak will be shorter. We also have flickers, which are woodpeckers that have a variety of colors, including red on the head. And flickers are going to be seen in the woods, but they're also more often seen on the ground because one of their favorite foods are ants. And so they will go to ant hills and stick their long tongues, which by the way, they have the longest tongues of any of the woodpeckers. They'll stick those long tongues down into the anthills to eat their favorite food. 
pileated woodpeckers are not as common, although they are found in McHenry County. They need to be in dense woods rather than an open savanna. And so looking for more of a deciduous forest is what you want to find a pileated woodpecker. The yellow-bellied sapsucker is another one that has yellow on its belly, although it looks a little bit more like the hairy and downy woodpeckers on its back. And it will make small holes in usually uh, evergreen trees. And you'll see when it finds a, a, a vein of sap, you'll actually see a whole run of holes next to each other where it continued to go along the tree, making holes to eat the sap and the insects that get caught in the sap. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to respect the plants and animals in your local conservation areas, and watch for us next time on McHenry County Conservation District's Wonders of the Wild. Oh. Oh.